I'm on the road all the time, and wherever I travel, I'm never too far from the parts and service I depend on from the quality teams at Auto Value and Bumper to Bumper Parts Stores and Certified Service Centers. Chances are you're close to the Auto Value and Bumper to Bumper pros too. Top quality parts, maintenance, and repairs done right the first time. That's Auto Value, that's Bumper to Bumper, where you'll find these quality products. That's a commercial you see each week on my TV show, The Chevy Sportsman. Hello again, everybody. I'm Alan Warren, and I'm once again pleased to bring you another special collection of classic outdoor films from many decades ago. Now, this videotape is not your run-of-the-mill bunch of fishing stories. What you're about to see has been made possible by my friends at Auto Value and Bumper to Bumper Auto Parts Stores. Now, these folks, along with the pros at O'Reilly Auto Parts Stores, have teamed up to help fund and produce this classic collection of fishing stories. I do hope you enjoy them. And remember, when it comes to auto parts and service, you can count on my friends at Auto Value, Bumper to Bumper, and O'Reilly Auto Parts Stores. They're great folks who love the same things that you and I do. Our special collection of outdoor TV fishing classics begins right after this. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. Who's really thinking about auto parts? If you're a real parts professional, you think about them 24 hours a day. At O'Reilly, we deliver parts to every store every night. So chances are we already have the right part at the right price when you need it. At O'Reilly, we're working day and night to bring you the best auto parts at everyday low prices. O'Reilly Auto Parts. You want it? We got it. challenging and fish filled. They're here, big ones, little ones, whatever you care to take. And as your plane touches down on inviting crystal cold blue waters, you're really anxious to get going. You've come a long, long way, but your first glimpse of camp wipes out any fatigue you may have sustained during the trip. And all the so-called preliminaries of getting settled at camp are waived. You came here to fish, and that's exactly what you intend to do pronto. You can either cast or troll up here. The fish are always within a few inches of the surface. However, your guide suggests you try trolling first, and you do, and what a strike you get. From now on, it's hold on or else. Watch this fella pull, would you? fight so hard they often knock themselves out before being netted. But this one looks like he's got plenty of steam left. He's had it now, but he couldn't be more exhausted than the lucky angler. And not nearly as excited. be the biggest in the lake, but my friend, he'll certainly do until a bigger one comes along, all right. This particular lake has only been open to sports fishing for the last couple of years, and it's never seen a commercial fisherman's net. It is suggested that if there's a new world record to be had, here is where he'll be caught. Boy, if a man can't forget his troubles and worries at a place like this, he just isn't alive. You just sit back, relax, and enjoy some of God's most splendid scenery. This is not the time for daydreaming. If you do, you'll awaken suddenly with a sore arm. This fellow's really cutting up the water. Let's watch. But 
but all good things must come to an end sometime, and this battle is no exception. Come on, fella. Another nice Laker is on board. Okay, partner, shake him loose from that net, and let's take a closer look. Well, maybe not quite as large as the first one, but you got to admit one thing, he sure fought hard. Anyways, way too small to keep, so back he goes. Maybe we'll get a line on him next year. Let's try for another, shall we? And action, as usual, isn't long in coming, either. Take a gander at this one's bid for freedom. Needless to say, one of the most enjoyable parts of a trip of this type is those wonderful shore dinners. And take it from a guy who knows, these northern guys can fillet those big fish like nobody's business. They say the most important attribute in this operation, other than know-how, of course, is a good sharp knife. But brother, they can slice off those sides without a bone in them. Mmm, boy, oh boy. The fillets are dipped in cornmeal with some egg, both sides, then tossed in the old frying pan. And from then on, fellas and gals, you're in for a taste treat that couldn't be duplicated in the finest restaurant in the world. The fat pink fillets literally sizzle in the pan. And if you've never had the opportunity to sink your teeth into that taste supreme, well, you've missed out on one of the real pleasures of life outdoors. Your shore dinner is interrupted by some visitors. You sort of wonder if they weren't attracted by the very pleasant aroma from the lunch. But as the boat comes closer, the sight you see almost makes you forget how hungry you really are. From where you are, it looks as though somebody in that outboard got himself a monstrous fish. Let's take a closer look at this. Yes, sir, this guy's got himself a big one, all right. A 57-pounder, just a few pounds short of the world's record. I'll say congratulations are in order. But before you know it, you're right back out there again, trying for that big one. And nature certainly gave this country a short haircut. A few flowers here and there, but as rugged as they come. Bingo, another strike. Maybe this is the one you've been waiting for. He can sure kick up a fuss, can he? days fishing at Great Bear Lake, Northwest Territories. Yes, 
this is God's country, and the fishing here in the lake named after him is nothing short of terrific. Imagine sitting on the pontoon of an airplane and pulling in lake trout almost at will. It's really something to write home about. But when it comes to musky, well, sometimes anglers fish day after day in waters literally alive with muscalonge without as much as one strike. He's king of the pike family, and as any seasoned plug tosser will testify, this freshwater tiger is one of the most elusive and wary fish that swims bar none. Ah, oh, but every once in a while, you're lucky enough to hit that day of days. Everything seems to be made to order. Mr. Muscalonge likes what you offer and takes it with a viciousness befitting his reputation. Yes, sir, no matter how many musky you may have taken during your fishing career, the one on the other end of that line right now gives you a brand new experience in thrills and chills. Just look at him explode that water. But even the most gallant champion must sometimes bow to the victor, and so with a final wild trick, he allows himself to be hauled aboard by his master. And there's a musky many of us would give a great deal to have caught. But the real fun in fishing is a battle not filling the creel, so this one shall have another chance for freedom. Now let's see how our other expert is making out. Whammo! Another nice strike, but he missed it. But he's after it again, and this time he's got it. The hook is set hard, and round one begins. You've got to handle this fella just right, my friend, especially on that light outfit. Tackle a lot heavier than it has been torn to ribbons by an infuriated muskie. Still mad, through and through, the battler is led into the net, and it's all over for him. Or is it? It appears as though this one can fight as well out of the water as he can in it. I'll say congratulations are in order. This is quite a day. And is this guy excited? Nah, he's only acting that way. Fishing may be relaxing, but at a time like this, it's mighty tough on the old blood pressure. Northern pike fishing, on the other hand, has its exciting moments, too. While it's perfectly true that old Mr. Longnose is not the spectacular fighter his larger cousin is, many pike fishermen will argue long and loud that this bruiser of the weed beds will hold his own with the best of them when it comes to fighting. Northern pike have enormous appetites, and as a rule, can be taken almost any time of the day, and when they hit, you'll feel the equivalent of an electric shock go up your casting arm. Normally, pike head for the bottom one hook, but hang into one with a surface lure. During the spring up north, and brother, you'll never forget it. Size northern like this one has as much pulling power as a 10 ton truck. Horse him, and nine times out of ten, he'll snap the line. But this baby is as good as in the creel. Not bad, buddy. Not bad. Don't know what kind of a song this expert is singing, but who could keep from crooning on a day like this? Boy, it's great to be alive. Let's try one in this weed bed and see what happens. Bingo, he really came up after that one. I'll say you'd better set that drag, Mr. Expert. And when this baby stops hauling the mail downstairs, he tries the aerial attack again. Those powerful 
powerful jaws could do plenty of damage to a man's fingers, so we'd better use the net on this one. Why, a man could almost make like a fish himself after taking one like that. That's no minnow. No, sir, at least not in my book. Trolling very often pays off, that is, when you get tired of casting for them, so let's give her a try. That's it, fella. Better set that break. You just never know what you might come up with in these waters. Look out, he smacked his foot hard. And you know something? It's never a good idea to try to land one of these crappers before he's played out. You just might get drenched. No use getting mad. We tried to warn you, mister. Look at the size of that monster, boy. This is the one I've been waiting for. I've got a place above my mantle all reserved for him. Easy now. That's no way to land a fish. Uh-oh. What was that about the big one always gets away? Brother, you just proved it. This is the Tree River country located north of Great Bear Lake in the Northwest Territory. This is a rugged land inhabited here and there with just a few bands of migrating Eskimos. It's a land that has little to offer anyone except the enterprising sportsmen. But a surprising number of them flock to this area annually in quest of a magnificent fighter of the Arctic called the Char. It's a beautiful fish, fights like blazes when hooked and take it from a guy who knows. It isn't often that you see them rolling on the surface like they are here in this swift Arctic stream. you think a char normally fights when hooked, well, brother, a foul hook one in a dorsal fin, and you'll never forget the battle. It isn't often you can land one of these babies once it's foul hooked. But the net comes into the water, and out comes this beautiful Arctic char. And there, my friends, you have the char, a species that those who can afford it spend thousands of dollars and travel equally as many miles each season to latch on to. You can only take two. This happens to be a male char, and brother, that's mighty tough on the old fingers, too. Hang on, pal. The male char, as is the case with much of our wildlife, is more brilliantly and beautifully marked than the more drab-colored female. But either one is a prize to be remembered. The weather up in this part of the country is truly amazing. During the so-called night and in the early morning hours, a man has to bundle up to be comfortable. However, as the day progresses, it's not uncommon to strip down to your T-shirt in order to maintain any degree of comfort. Of course, on the other hand, when fighting a monster like this, it's not difficult for a man to work up a sweat. The world's record char is 27 pounds. The one you see being played here weighs 22. And on light tackle, oh, brother, five will get you 10. This fish is destined to end up on the trophy wall of his lucky captor. And well, it should, because just take a gander at one of the most beautiful fish of them all. Now, if you can take your eyes off that fish, you will notice in the background that there are no trees, which means that this group of anglers are fishing at least 300 miles above the timber line. Nothing up here but small shrubs and flowers. No timber whatsoever. Ah, but no time out for sightseeing around here. One more cast brings another char, and it looks enough like its predecessor to be its father, or its brother. It reached the point where these sportsmen who came so far to get a taste of Arctic char fishing, they had caught so many fish, they filed off the barbs of their hooks and released virtually everything they caught with the exception of the two they were allowed to take home. These waters are located only a few short miles from the Arctic Ocean, and there's no question that this guy had the two he wants to take home. The 
The fishing season up in this part of the country is quite short, four to five weeks at the maximum. The rest of the time, the country is frozen solid. So, as the fellow says, you've got to make hay while the sun shines. Also, the Arctic char cannot be caught at random, as it would appear here. It comes into fresh water each year during the month of August, but only for a 10-day period. This could vary from August 1st to August 10th, or August 10th to August 20th, or, of course, from August 20th to the end of the month. So, it's a calculated risk. You have to be lucky to hit it at just the right portion of the 10-day period, during which time Mr. Char decides to come into fresh water. Ah, but with all indications, it would appear that these boys hit it right smack on the head. This is a heavy fish, as anyone can plainly see. And the amazing part of it is the fact that all or almost all fish caught are in excess of 10 pounds. It's almost like perpetual motion. Yes, sir, there are smiles to spare on this fishing expedition. From where we sit, it would appear that almost every cast nets a fish. These fish, once they're located, strike almost at will. But how long you keep them on is a horse of a different color. Only about one or two out of seven or eight hooked are landed. And of course, when you take a look at that white water and the size of the fish that are involved, it's easy to understand why many of them get away. working on the second half of his limit of two, and he has one that will almost break the world's record, it's easy to understand why excitement runs high. In this case, it would seem that the net is just too small, and then everybody gets into the act, including the fisherman who becomes so alarmed over the fact that his prize might escape that he promptly got rid of his rod and reel. Ah, but all's well that ends well, and certainly this trip to the Arctic could not have been more successful. Nice going, fellas. The day breaks crisp and bright. There's just enough bite in the air to make for a very comfortable temperature. Not too warm, not too hot, just right. And of course, as usual, all thoughts are focused on the fishing adventure that lies ahead. isn't long in coming either. A smashing strike tells all that Mr. Salmon is ready to tuck a napkin under his chin this beautiful morning. And after a brief and final display of fight, the Silver Simon meekly allows himself to be hauled on board. And what a beauty he is! A man can do with a little rest after a battle like that. And this is also the time for planning the next move. Of course, that next move involves a feel of another fighter on the other end of that line. Man, that I should live through this. What fishing? has any sporting blood in his veins at all, it's bound to start pumping faster at the sight of a beautiful silver salmon fighting in water so clear you can see every move he makes. 
A guy has a right to show off a little at a time like this. Good going, fella. That's a beauty. To anyone living in this fabulous country, two material things are essential. A good boat to get around the water and, of course, an airplane. Yes, sir, they say up in Alaska, everyone flies and everyone fishes. And from where I'm sitting, that's quite a water conveyance those guys have. And when going from one place to another, you just simply sit back and enjoy some of the most beautiful scenery that exists. Yes, it's been quite a day. Let's see how the tally totals up. fish are almost as big as the small fry spectators. again, complete with camper and all provisions to find another choice spot up in this fascinating country. And when the right spot is reached, the ritual begins again of loading and unloading the various ingredients that go into making a fabulous fishing trip. Of course, one of the most important ingredients of all are those famous shore dinners, made up of fresh fish cooked over an open fire. And then, it's off again. What will this adventure bring? Well, who knows, but there's one thing for sure. When fishing waters like these, you're bound to get a lot of finny trophies. Blame you, pal. I'd smile too if I had something like that at the other end of my line. The flight itself to this fascinating place is indeed a separate adventure. The desolate land beneath you is dotted with an abundance of some of the most beautiful and inviting freshwater lake you've ever seen. You can't help thinking, man, oh man, what I wouldn't give to drop a line into some of them. Imagine being the first human to set foot along those shorelines. But then you suddenly realize that the almost inaccessible lake towards which you're presently winging your way has hardly been fished at all. As a matter of fact, up until the time of this trip, only one group of enterprising anglers had preceded you. Yes, this is Chantry Inlet at last. It's a long trip, and the big PBY aircraft that brought you here certainly deserves a rest. And there along the rugged shoreline are the tents that will represent your home away from home for the next few days. Incidentally, the maximum angling time old Mother Nature permits here is from three to four weeks at the most, and that's during the month of August. The rest of the time, this country is covered with snow, and the waters are frozen solid with six feet or more of blue ice.
The first anglers to hit the beach are greeted by a small band of Eskimos who are themselves temporary visitors. They come by dog sled from several hundred miles south, wait for the ice to go out, then spend as much time as possible catching fish. When the snow returns, they head home with enough food for dog and man to see them through the long, hard winter. Ah, oh, but it's time to go fishing. It's lake trout we're after, so it's big spoon. The idea is to troll back and forth parallel to that white water, but extreme caution must be exercised in order not to get too close. And before you can say lake trout, one of the nicest you've ever seen is already fighting it out. The water here is extremely shallow, six feet at the most, so it serves to follow that most of the battle takes place on or near the surface. Let's watch this. A real beauty in anybody's book. These monsters can be handled on regular conventional tackle, but most anglers who come this far for that big one prefer to use something a little heavier, however, to each his own. This is a small one by Chantry Inlet standards, but he's certainly giving a good account of himself. And there are better ways of landing a fish, too. However, all fish were released except the few that were kept for food. Of course, a couple were also retained for mounting purposes. Can you blame them? It's almost like perpetual motion. No sooner does the lure hit the water than a respectable sized lake trout slams into it. And from then on, fellas and gals, the good old contest begins all over again. another small one, so it's destined to be released. Very gently, the gaff is inserted in the lower jaw of the fish, so as not to harm it in any way. There'll always be good fishing here, as long as good sportsmanship is practiced. Well, I guess I should have landed it by hand in the first place. Medium-heavy spinning tackle may also be used, but man, you'll be grinding away for an hour. Particularly on one this size. Man, I sure don't want to lose this one. I've got a place in my den all reserved for this baby. Society come, but it took just about all I had to do it. Wow! Forty pounds of silver lake trout. Brother, I'll remember this for a long time. Was that the biggest taken, you ask? Heck no, it was just a minnow compared to this 56-pounder caught by another lucky member of our expedition. How about that one, huh? Anyway, I'll say that all things considered, we had a pretty successful jaunt to Chantry Inlet, wouldn't you?
it's difficult to realize that in this day and age, there still remain remote areas such as this where nature is truly unspoiled. This country has remained unchanged down through the years. Fish, big scrapping record sized fish, just waiting for your plug or spoon literally infest the cold, clear waters. Doubtless God could have made better fishing, but doubtless God never did. One of the most popular finny trophies sought after by anglers up here is the lake trout. These big fellows will test the durability of the tackle and a man's ability to the nth degree. Oftentimes, they're just too large to fit into a big dip net. So the next best thing is to try to grab them by the gills and haul them aboard. How much does he weigh? Well, a mere 29 pounds. Mmm, brother. in this part of the country, the most popular mode of water transportation is the canoe. Not just an ordinary canoe, mind you, but a stable 22-foot freighter with a 5-foot beam. This baby will take the rapids in stride, and that 10-horsepower marvel during the pushing will take you up the lake in a hurry. A man couldn't get very far in waters like these without the help of two expert Indian guides either. From here on, brother, you just hang on to your hats and don't stand up. This is Island Lake River in the heart of the Manitoba wilds. It's in this area that monstrous sized speckled trout exist by the thousands. Veteran anglers from all over North America travel many miles each season in order to latch onto these fighting beauties. They really pour on the coal when that steel bites home. Watch him go! and landed, you may be sure, but this one is good as in the old skillet. All right, well, there's one there more, so let's get cracking, shall we? The lowers always cast upstream, then retrieve back through the rushing water. Whammo! Another speckled beauty is on the line. Hang on to him, fella. Don't let him throw you. Fighting a four-pound square tail in swift waters is a real challenge. Watch him pull. Again, the net comes into play, and it's one more gamester in the creel. How do you like this for size, huh? I'll say pictures are in order. Five will get you ten that these trout will end up at the taxidermist. Mm -mm. Wow, here's one that'll go five pounds. Well, four and a half. No trip would be complete without taking a crack at old Mr. Long knows himself the Northern Pike, and from here it looks like he's already connected. Hang on, pal, you've got a good one. This could be the granddaddy of them all. Watch it. Don't let him take that rod under the canoe. Steady now. Would you look at that? Wait a minute, friend. That bruiser of the weed beds isn't ready to come in yet. You don't horse them like you do bluegills. Now's the time. Atta boy. Wow. There's a nice pike, huh? Walleyes, well, they grow big and tough up here, and there are plenty of them, too. There's a nice one ready to be boated. Or is he? Well, that's one way of getting them. And take it from me, nothing. Nothing tastes better than freshly caught walleye cooked over an open fire. Hey, here's more action. That's right, Mr. Angler. Get him in that net. Atta, boy. Nice going. Now, what do you say we get him out of that net and take a closer look, huh? Seven pounds of golden walleye. And when evening falls, it's fun to meet your other fishing buddies and compare the day's results. It's a cinch there'll be plenty to look at. Let's see how these boys did. Hmm. Not bad. Not bad. They'll go 15 or 20 pounds each. Oh, come on, boys. You can do better than that. You mean those minnows are all you came up with? Well, okay, Mr. Guide. Let's have them take a gander at what we've come up with. 
Man, oh man, just get a load of these. That's all right, friend. You've got every right to be proud. Yes, this is a real Canadian wilderness, an area filled with rugged beauty everywhere around you. A great waterfall far above a river thunders through the wilderness. And then the stream plunges off a cliff 50 feet high and crashes into the lake below. In a quiet pocket where the rapids begin to lose their strength, walleye come to feed in the early morning. You work the edge of the fast water, trolling slowly. And before you know it, one of the youngsters already has one on. Oh, I hope it's a nice, big, golden walleye. A walleye! It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Right now, don't lift anything. Don't lift anything. Let's go. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't do nothing. We'll tell you when, Willie. Willie, don't do nothing. We'll tell you when. Okay, Johnny. Oh. 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 But he learned another lesson. You don't win them all. Sometimes you pick up the action on walleye fishing a bit by leaving the fast water and going around the point. Here you find a deeper shoreline, and you know I can't possibly think of anything more rewarding than a couple of adults taking out two small boys and introducing them to fishing like this. I guess this is just one of the many reasons why fishing always has and always will be the great sport it is for young and old alike. When you're teaching a youngster to fish, you have as much fun as the kid himself when he hooks one. <laughs> see what we mean? Let's sit back and see how this young fella makes out with his. As a matter of fact, they're both hooked into a fighting walleye. Well, there's one on board. And here comes number two. Oh, the walleye is not the greatest fighting fish in the world, unless he's much larger than he's. But when it comes to eating, nothing can equal it. And when you get them this size, they become a great piece of merchandise in the frying pan, too. They're a school fish. When you get one, you'll invariably get more. See what we mean? There's a dandy. And man, hook even a small two or three pounder in these cold Canadian waters and you'll have a real fight on your hands. Well, there's another nice walleye for the old stringer. And no one need remind anybody that these kids are having the time of their lives. There's another bruiser of the weed beds up in this part of the country called the Northern Pike. They grow big and tough. And brother, they can test the skill and tackle of any angler to the nth degree. These babies have real powerhouse drive. And on light tackle, oh brother. The Northern is not normally a top water fighter, although it's not uncommon for him to make one or two jumps. Most of his fight is deep down where he sounds and pulls and tugs. And every time he gets up near the boat and you think you can get a line on him, well, he takes off more line again. from a guy who knows when you try to land one of these babies without a net or gaff you'd better use extreme caution those powerful jaws are lined with razor sharp teeth and they know how to use them
Yes, sir, that's a nice northern in anybody's book. But man does not live by fish alone, and it certainly isn't necessary to convince these boys of that. They were a couple of hungry men. And believe you me, a man who knows how to fillet these fish can fix them up so there's not a bone in them. A prerequisite for filleting fish is a sharp knife. And of course, a steady hand. What kid doesn't dream of finding buried treasure, huh? And up here, the muskeg grows as soft as a mattress. but even the search for buried treasure has to be forsaken when the aroma starts drifting through those jack pine trees. Yes, sir, a couple of youngsters on their very first trip into the wilds of Canada. Needless to say, they'll never forget this experience, and you can be certain of another thing, too. By the time they get home, they will have gained a good five pounds each. Yes, this is Alaska's Kodiak Island, a barren, desolate land located well above the timber line. Shelter is scarce up here and by civilized standards quite meager. Ah, but when men come this far to fish, it's not a question of living conditions, it's are they heading? Up in this country, the answer to that one is always yes. Our experts are after the battling silver or coho salmon, and as usual, a smashing strike tells all that Mr. Coho is ready, willing, and able to take most any offering presented to him. Conventional spinning tackle is the order of the day, and brother, if you don't think it takes a lot of know-how to land a 10 to 15 pound bruiser, fresh from the sea and full of fight on this light equipment, well, just take a gander at this. These great fish are nearing the end of their spawning run, which takes place further up in this freshwater stream. After spawning, they die, having completed their life cycle. Ah, but it looks as though this big fellow's about to join the ranks of the ones that got away because out flips the hook and back into the whitewater swims this prize coho. Too bad, Mac, too bad. Up in this country, fortunately, the angling is far more predictable than the weather. Oftentimes, a man has to really buck the elements in order to experience a taste of action like this. Add to this a raging stream with a 10-pound salmon on the other end of light tackle, and my friend, you've really got your hands full. but all's well that ends well. And from here, it looks like this beauty is as good as hanging on the trophy wall. Nice going, partner. But up in Alaska isn't the only spot in North America where the coho salmon abounds. No, sir, not by a long shot. At certain times of the year, one of the largest freshwater lakes in the world, Lake Michigan, located some 3,000 miles southeast of Kodiak Island, has jammed to capacity with eager anglers. What are they after? Why, coho salmon, of course. Yes, sir, a few years back, coho salmon fingerlings were stocked in this great body of water. And because of the abundance of food fish in Lake Michigan, these salmon grew to 20 pounds within three short years. And fellas and gals offer a small spinner that runs on or near the surface. And if there's a coho within 50 feet, he'll take it with every bit of viciousness befitting his reputation. And from then on, it's hold on or else. Look at that baby walk on his tail, would you? with that net, pal. You sure don't want to miss this one. Easy, easy, easy. Watch it. That's a good way to lose a darn good fish. Ah, 
Shut up, boy. You got him. Buddy, you may have taken an 8 or 10 pound northern or walleye in your time, but you haven't lived until you latch onto one of these babies. Oh, about 15 pounds, I'd say, and every ounce loaded with dynamite. Tackle is more or less a matter of preference and angling experience. However, most sportsmen, particularly on their first trip to Lake Michigan, like something a little heavier than ultralight spinning gear in their hands when mixing it up with a big coho salmon. Hmm, <laughs> small wonder, huh? Now I ask you, isn't that a beautiful fish? Oh my, oh my, oh my. This guy's really got something to write home about. There's a place called Victoria Island, located well within the Arctic Circle of Canada's rugged Northwest Territories, that boasts of another freshwater species of game fish that spends part of its time in the sea, and that's the Arctic char. Few anglers have ever even heard of it, let alone fished for it, but the men who have will be quick to tell you that when hooked, it becomes the fastest fightinest fury with fins on it. Again, conventional spinning tackle may be used with about 15 pound test line, and brother, it'll take all of that and more to cope with this bruiser of fast water when you connect too. He's out of the water almost as much as he is in it. Let's settle back and watch this. Every time you think he's about ready to submit, he calls upon more of that reserved energy and once again the water explodes like a series of depth charges. But finally, even the most gallant champion must sometimes bow to the victor. Ah, but this champ comes in whipped but scrapping to the very finish. And there you have it, folks. The Arctic Char, a trophy among trophies in anybody's book. Congratulations, fella. come this far north, you must come prepared. It's an unusual country from many different standpoints, not the least of which the changeable weather. But of course, all these so-called hardships are well rewarded when you tie into the lunkers found up here. It's a beautiful day, and everyone gets set for the action which most surely will come. There's something about dropping a lure into strange waters that fills any angler with excitement. And that action we spoke of a moment ago, arise with that first cast. From now on, you just sit back, hang on, and hope whatever it is on the other end of that line tires before you do. So it's not the biggest fish in the lake, but it's not bad for a starter. There's one thing for sure, with a few like this, you can mark a couple of bucks off the old food budget. Uh-oh, looks like that weather we were talking about has appeared as suddenly as that trout took the lure. It's a pretty good idea to head for shore when an Alaskan rainstorm rolls in. It's the safest place to be. And it would seem that about half the rain that fell ended up in the boat. Even a boat that never leaks can't keep old Ma Nature from pouring it in topside. 
And then one afternoon, you stop to view an awe-inspiring sight. One of the greatest of nature's tragedies. It's not a pleasant sight with thousands of acres of nature's wonderland turned into black and scarred ruins. Never in our lifetime will those magnificent trees be replaced. Only God can make a tree. That line of Joyce Kilmer's chokes in your throat as you watch God's handiwork go up in smoke, destroying every living thing in the fire's path. tries to cover her scars of fire with natural beauty, but still the black and seared fingers reach towards the heavens, as if calling down a judgment upon those of us who through carelessness and indifference destroy nature's bounties. But even up in the vast country of Alaska, flights into remote lakes inaccessible by road are common. And it's quite a feat setting a light aircraft down in a small area. This particular lake is located near a mouth of a river that according to information our boys received is literally alive with near record sized grayling. drops off our anglers and will return later in the evening to pick them up. As soon as the tackle was unloaded, the pilot points out the trail to the river. And it's off again on a new adventure in angling. It's kind of a funny feeling to be left out there all alone in the wilderness, what with the airplane gone and everything. But man, it didn't take long to forget all that because no sooner than the fly hits the water, than a fighting grayling is on the line. Now the grayling is not a spectacular fighter, but a four ounce fly rod is just perfect for tangling with him. But he's got plenty of action. There's no fish more beautiful than the Arctic grayling. He looks like a miniature sailfish with that big dorsal fin. That's where he gets his powerhouse drive. But as usual, like all good sportsmen, these two fishermen, after having caught enough to eat, release the rest. They remove the barbs from their hooks so they can easily turn back the fish uninjured. The pilot was sure right about that river. It's almost like perpetual motion. Fly dropped upstream, allowed to drift, and bingo! One more grayling. By the time the plane came back in that evening, our anglers had seen grayling fishing the likes of which they never dreamed existed. And there's one thing for sure. As long as these two adventuresome anglers live, they'll never forget this fishing trip to Alaska.